Hello, my name is Buki, and today we're going to talk about resilience. Resilience in your personal life and resilience in your corporate world. How do you maintain resilience in the face of adversity? And as an example, I'm going to use Chino Achebe's novel called Things Fall Apart. And with that, we're going to explore two things that you need to master resilience and strength. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush and make you wait till the end for these two things. I will tell you straight away, the two things that you need are a place to call home and you also need useful comparators. And I will expand on that and tell you what that means shortly. My name is Buki and I guide professionals like you on how to use art and literature to craft a successful personal and business life. And if this sounds like you, like my channel, follow, subscribe. So first of all, I'll give you the background of Things Fall Apart in case you're not familiar with the novel. Now, this is a novel written by Chinua Achebe in 1958. It was the first book in the Heinemann's African Writer series. And this book follows the fiery hero called Okonkwo through his uh, personal travails. Um, in his hometown. Now, the cut to the chase of the adversity he faced. The first thing that brought adversity into Okonkwo's life was a very natural thing. He, the, he'd experienced problems with farming in the first instance, but then there was something that he did personally that caused great adversity for him and his family. He made a grave error, which resulted in him being excommunicated from his town. Now, he grieved this he grieved this really greatly because he had to leave and he had to go back to his mother's people. Now, he had an uncle, his mother's brother, who he stayed with, and his uncle was called a man called Uchenda. And Uchenda tried to talk to him, allowed him, he gave him some time to grieve, and he came over to him and he tried to encourage him. And he said, you know, when things are great, when things are absolutely wonderful, when things are awesome, that is when you need your fatherland. In times of trouble, that's when you come back to your motherland. What that means is you need a soft place called home. So the motherland represents that place of nurture, that place of care, that place of feeding, that place where things are a bit slow and that place of unconditional acceptance. And that was what Uchendo provided. That was home. So when we face our own adversities and we face you know, lots of different things, we have to define for ourselves, what is that place that we find home? Where is that refuge? What is that place that we can call our motherland? That's a metaphorical symbol, but in our lives, we need that very real and present place. Where is that place of feeding that we can find, that we can sit down undisturbed? Where is that place of pause where we can retreat from the current troubles that we're feeling? So for some of us, that place of home might be a very real and physical place. For some of us, that place of home might actually be a person who we trust and a person who is close to us, that person who gives us that warm feeling of nurturing. For some of us, it might be an environment. Some people say they feel the most themselves walking through a park or sitting in a museum or just a place of stillness and solitude. So it could be a place, it could be a person, it could be an attitude, it could be an environment. But at the most basic level, home is yourself. Home is a return to yourself. So when you don't have the place or the person or the environment, you can always find a place within yourself to call home. So we don't rush out to defeat the adversity straight away. We pause first. We pause first in the place we call home. Now, while the Konkwa was dealing with this really, really huge excommunication, this was the grand disaster. We remember that in the book, there was actually a previous failure he had where there was a harvest that was bad. It was described as, they wrote, the year had gone mad. At the end, I'll put a link to a video, to a recording of um, this reading of the harvest passage. It's a very beautiful passage. And it talks about a year that's gone mad and the harvest was horrible. And Okonkwa felt he'd be destroyed at that time. And his father, the book says, of his father, Unoka, who was an ailing man, had said to him during that terrible harvest, he said, do not despair. I know you will not despair. You have a manly and a proud heart. A proud heart can survive a general failure because... Such a failure does not prick its pride. It is more difficult and more bitter when a man fails alone. Unoka was like that in his last days. His love of talk had grown with age and sickness. It tried Okonkwo's patience beyond words. He didn't have a great relationship with his father. So in his first problem, his father told him it's the aloneness that affects you. 
and he found that irritating. But when he had the greater disaster, his uncle echoed the same thing. And he said, you, you need that place that is home. So that first example, home, always find a place that you call home. So the second example, find useful comparators. So after talking to him about the motherland, his uncle, Chendu, tells him that there is a, there's a saying that we say when women die, it says, for whom is it well? For whom is it well? There is no one for whom it is well. Now on the surface, why should this comfort us? Like other people have problems. You know, when you have problems, other people have problems. Is that supposed to make you feel better? No, it is not about dismissing your personal pain. It's not about invalidating it, but it acknowledges that your pain is not isolated. And it's not to say your pain is not isolated, so get over it. No, it is your pain is not isolated, so you are connected to a wider body of people. You are connected to other people's emotions. You are connected to other people's pain. You are connected to those who have undergone this same feeling. The writer James Baldwin put it quite beautifully. He said, um, you think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. It was books that taught me that the things that tormented me most were the very things that connected me with all the people who were alive who had ever been alive. So when James Baldwin wrote that, he means in that pain and understanding that the pain is not in isolation, you find solidarity, you find connection, and you find great understanding among others who've experienced similar things. And you seek out these people and this point still brings us back to home because when in adversity, the first thing you do is you seek home, you seek connection. And these things will always help you to bounce back from hard times. Remain resilient, my friends. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe for more ideas on using art and literature to help you achieve your personal and work development goals.